Exodus 3.14. Moses sees the bush. It's on fire, but not consumed. Right? And out of that bush comes the voice of God. I want you to contrast that to the Greek and Roman myths. When the gods, who are just big items within the universe, right? They live up on Mount Olympus. They're like us. They're beings among many. When the gods break into human experience, what happens? People are incinerated. People blow up. They're killed. See, they have to give way to make room for the gods. Because, see, we're competitive. Two physical things can't occupy the same space, right? Psychologically, we can't occupy the same space. There's a mutual exclusivity about finite things. That's why when the gods come in, we got to give way. Now, Exodus 3.14. Here's the bush, a created thing, right? On fire with the presence of God, but not consumed. See what that signals? That the true God is not competitive with the world. But rather, when the true God comes close, we become radiant and beautiful, and we are not consumed. There's the non-competitive God of the Bible, translated by Thomas Aquinas into the language of being itself. God is the sheer act of being itself. The more we surrender to that God, the more luminous and beautiful and human we become. Now, another contrast. The new atheists, there's nothing new about them really, except they're nasty. That's what's new about them. But their arguments are as old as the hills. They're borrowed from the classical atheists. People like Ludwig Feuerbach, beginning of the 19th century. What did Feuerbach say? Oh, God is just this fussy projection of our own mind. Wishful thinking. We made him up, right? Which is why Feuerbach famously said, the Nein zu Gott, the no to God, is the Ja zu Menschen, is the yes to us, to man, to humanity. See how that makes sense? If God's a competitor, then the more I say no to God, the more human I become. His disciple, by the way, was Karl Marx. Marx said... We must all be baptized in the Feuerbach. Feuerbach means brook of fire in German, so it's a neat little pun. We must all pass through the fiery brook and be baptized in Feuerbach. What did Marx say? Religion's a a silly uh, illusion. It's the opiate of the people. The sooner we get rid of it, the better we're going to be, the more human we'll be. Sigmund Freud was a disciple of both Feuerbach and Marx. What did Freud say? Religion is like a waking dream, right? This dream, this fantasy we cook up. And the sooner we wake up, the sooner we'll move out of our infancy into real adulthood. Same thing. The no to God is the yes to to us. Jean-Paul Sartre, right, the founder of existentialism, was a disciple of all three of those gentlemen. What did Sartre say? If God exists, I can't be free. There's a God brooding over my freedom, telling me what to do, dominating me, pushing into my life, manipulating me. If God exists, I can't be free. But I am free. Therefore, there's no God. That starts existentialism. What do they all have in common? They all think of God as a competitor to human flourishing, competing with us on the same plane, pushing us out of the way so he can come to dominate. That's all ends sumum language. You see what I'm driving at? That's all God is highest being language. But God is not the highest being. God is the sheer act of being itself. Look, in and through which all things come to be. God is the God of the burning bush. The closer he comes, the more alive we are. Which is precisely why, way back in the second century, the great Saint Irenaeus of Lyon, way in advance of Feuerbach, Marx, and Marx and Sartre and Freud, refuted them, because Irenaeus said, "Gloria Dei Homo Vivens." That means the glory of God is a human being fully alive. 
wonderful. Burning bush. We become luminous and radiant and beautiful the closer God gets to us. You know, everybody, I, I think with our young people in mind, we have done a first-class lousy job at, at explaining who God is. Because so many have fallen victim to these atheists old and new who see God as a threat to human flourishing. we got to get a lot better, it seems to me, at explaining who the true God is. And why, therefore, listen, why Christianity is the greatest humanism ever proposed. You know what the church fathers always said? They had a little adage. They all said it. Deus fit homo, ut homo fieret Deus. That means God became one of us so that we might become divinized. Isn't that beautiful? That's what God becoming one of us means. It means we are being drawn into the power of his life. Don't fall prey to this weird view of God as competing with us, undermining us, compromising us. No, no, the true God makes us human. 